This has been a long time coming and I honestly did not think I was gonna get this done, but I am finally sharing my pantry makeover reveal. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to my channel. If you love high-end home decor DIYs on a budget, please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. Now, before we get started, I wanted to share that today's video is sponsored by Cricut. I'll be showing you guys how I use my Cricut in order to organize my new pantry space and make it a lot more functional. If you've been following along, we moved into this house a little over a year and a half ago, and it was in need of some serious TLC. So my husband and I have been pretty much taking it upon ourselves to fix it as we go. And one of the things that we came across when we first moved into this house was that there was no pantry in the kitchen. Now I do have a lot of cabinets in the kitchen, but I like to have a set place so that I can store all of my food. And for the sake of finding a place right away, we decided to use our closet that's down the hallway. As you can see, this was not the ideal place, but it did serve its purpose while we were trying to figure out a solution for where we needed to place our pantry. Now, as we lived in the space, things started changing. And one of the things that we had to do was replace our entire water line system. And when we did that, we decided to move the laundry room downstairs, giving us a huge space to work with and to recreate something new. And I decided that that's where I wanted to place my pantry. And in this video, I am gonna take you throughout the entire transformation of this little space from what it was when we first moved in to what it is now. And I am so excited to share how this space has evolved. All right, let's get started. Oh my God, there's even hair. Oh, that's gross. That's gross. If you've been with us for quite some time, you know the state of the laundry room when we moved in. It was pretty disgusting. And we had to open up the walls because unfortunately the washer and dryer that we had wasn't going to fit. So we started off by cleaning the space and removing the popcorn ceilings. And the Latino engineer removed all of the casing and widened the opening. We added new tiles and we painted all of the walls. Then we installed a cabinet and some shelving and it worked for a little while as our laundry room. But when the opportunity came to move our laundry room downstairs, we loved the idea and decided to do it. And now we were left with this open space. We did go through a list of things that it could possibly be. We already had a linen closet, so we didn't need one. It could not function as a mudroom because it was nowhere near an entrance. And honestly, I was loving the idea of creating a huge pantry in this space, freeing up the closet it was currently in and make that a proper coat closet since we did not have one in the house. So next, it was time to remove the shelves as well as that cabinet. Now, if you're wondering why we're taking all of this down, it's because I had a different vision for this space and I shared all about it in my mood board. I was going to be adding new cabinetry anyways, and I wanted open shelving at the top. So that's why we went ahead and took these down. After everything was removed, then it was time to patch up all of the holes on the wall. These holes were made when the system was removed from there and then changed down to the basement these holes were just left over from that so we needed to go ahead and patch these up Obviously, for all of you watching this, um, I was just kind of being sloppy with the mud. This is going behind a cabinet, and then we're doing some sort of paneling on here. So the ultimate goal is just to put mud, tape, smooth it out. I'll come in here and just kind of sand it to you know rough out or sand all the rough edges. But if this was a finished product, I would have took a lot more care into you know what I did. So don't criticize me. I'm just doing a quick job. After the holes were repaired, my husband made a frame to go underneath the cabinets because these are actually upper cabinets. They're not as deep as lower cabinets. And he wanted to create a little toe kick on the bottom 
for whenever I'm in the space using those cabinets. He shimmed everything up to make sure everything was nice and level and then drilled this frame into the studs of the wall. After the frame was in place, we placed the cabinets on top of it and then secured them to the wall onto the studs. Then making sure that everything was level side to side and front to back, we went ahead and started on the upper floating shelves. However, before we could install the shelves, we had to take care of one issue. The walls were not even and there was a huge gap in the center of the wall, meaning that the wall on the sides were close up to the cabinets, but the walls in the center were pretty far apart. So we actually had to add some poplar boards in order to make up this space so that when we added the shelving, it would lie flat up against the back wall. Which is why you see us adding these vertical pieces right here and you'll see a shot that will show them a little clearer in a little bit. We use 2 by 2s to create the framing for the inside of the floating shelves. We needed to make sure that any of the weight of the items that were put on top of these shelves were distributed evenly. So we had to make sure that the individual wooden pieces that were going to go along the back piece of wood and inside of the floating shelves were distributed evenly. We created pocket holes in order to attach the pieces to each other. And then we install these on the wall, making sure that we drill them into the studs. Now the two inner smaller pieces of wood were attached to that long back piece of wood that you see us installing right there. But the two end pieces that you see on the bottom shelf right there, the ones on the very edge of the shelf, those had to be installed on the wall directly and into the studs on the side walls because those walls weren't even either. Now we thought that we could add the top wood piece and the bottom wood piece to the shelves without adding an extra brace on the front, but we were wrong and we had to go back in and add a piece on the front as well. That's why you see the bottom one has the front and the two top ones don't. Adding that front piece made these shelves that much more stable. So then we went ahead and began to cut the rest of the plywood that we had for the top and bottom pieces of these shelves. Once we made sure that the cut plywood fit perfectly on top of the shelves, we came in with some liquid nails and a nail gun and we secured them to the frame. Now for the top of the shelf, we used plywood that was one half inch thick. And for underneath the shelves, we use one quarter inch thick plywood. The reason behind this is because the bottom is merely just for covering up the underneath part of the shelf, but the top of the shelf needs to be sturdier for all the things that we're going to put on top of it. I'm going to make sure and link everything that we used in order to create this pantry build in my description box below in case you have any questions or want to check anything out. For the faces of each of the shelves, we use the same quarter inch plywood and we started off with liquid nails and then secured it with a nail gun. Once the shelves were done, it was time for the countertop and we used the same butcher block counters that we used in our kitchen remodel. If you haven't seen our kitchen makeover yet, I'll make sure to link to it for you all as well. Since the cabinets were not the standard cabinet depth, we had to cut it down in order to fit the ones that we chose for the space. We 
you made sure that the countertop was nice and level before adding silicone underneath to adhere it to the countertops. And so far, this is the progress. For the back wall, I really wanted to find this newer shiplap beadboard that is available at Home Depot. We cut the ends to match the length of the back wall, and then we cut them down to fit in between all of the shelves. When we ripped them long ways, I wanted it to look like the shiplap was behind the shelves, like up the wall, so we would skim off a little bit of the paneling to make up for that space that the shelf would take, and then cut the board again, so that when your eye went from top to bottom or from bottom to top, while looking at the pantry, it will look like a continuous pattern that went up the wall. I hope that makes sense. And just like the shelves, we added liquid nails before putting the panels up and then use finishing nails with our nail gun in order to install it. And then after everything was set in place, it was time to start with the finishing touches. And the first thing I did was add wood filler throughout all of the shelves, making sure that I sealed all of those gaps between the pieces of wood. I used the Sherwin-Williams wood filler because I plan on painting these shelves. However, if you want more of a natural look and want to stain your shelves, if you do decide to do something like this, you might want to try the one on the right. As you can see, the one on the right is what I'm using right now and it's a more of a natural tone, but you can tell where I used the Sherwin-Williams one right underneath the lip of that shelf because it looks a lot more yellow. Daps plastic wood essentially makes any crevice or any nail hole disappear and it blends perfectly with your wood. Now while I was finishing up with the wood filling, my husband was tackling the wall in front of the pantry. This wall has been down to the studs ever since we moved in and made that space more open for the laundry room that we had in there before. This was probably his most complicated drywall application he's done so far. And I will say, there's two things my husband doesn't care to do very much and that's drywall and plumbing. <laughs> but he did an amazing job on this. And he was even able to use his magnetic bracelet that I got him for Christmas so that he can hold all of his screws while he installs the drywall. Once the drywall was installed, I went back to my wood filler and sanded all of it completely smooth. While I was doing that, my husband was adding mud all over the drywall. It's surprising how much work this little space needed even though it was such a small area. This is what it looked like before it was sanded down. We did sand it, but we didn't film it because it was so dusty. We didn't want to damage the camera equipment. Then it was off to do more detail work. And we caulked all of the panels where they met the walls, the ceiling, and the shelves. We do this together as well. He usually applies and I wipe it nice and smooth. After all of the caulking was dry, I came in with some oil-based primer and I primed all of the shelves. I like to use oil-based primer when painting built-ins like this because it prevents any of the wood grain knots or any bleeding come through the latex paint that you apply on top of it. And then it was off to paint the shelves. Now I decided to go with the same paint that I used for my kitchen renovation. I had some left over from when I painted my cabinets and I decided to use it in here as well. 
Now when doing the Old Base Primer, I only need one coat, but whenever I paint it with the actual paint that it's gonna have on there, I do like to give anything that I paint two full coats. I will say that painting underneath these shelves was extremely difficult. And no, no painting tape was used throughout this entire process. While I finished painting the shelves, my husband worked on painting the wall right outside the pantry. And then I came in and finished it up. I also painted the shiplap beadboard as well. And for this, I use the same type of cabinet paint that I use for the shelves, but I used it in the white color that I used for all of my baseboards and window trim in this house. For a smooth finish, you always want to use a brush for inside all of the crevices, and then you wanna go over it with a roller to smooth it out. Finally, we needed to add the door pulls onto each of the cabinet doors, and then I sealed the butcher block countertop. Then after everything we did, it was finally time to tackle what was going to go inside of the pantry. And I went looking at several places for things that I can incorporate inside so that I can better organize my items. To be honest, I have never used this many containers, but I was excited to and unfortunately I could not get these cereal boxes open for the life of me. So I had to get my husband <laughs> to come in and rescue me. But it was kind of funny because he couldn't get it opened either and there was a trick to it you had to like squeeze them to get the suction off and then they came apart I also had some stuff that I already had like these baskets these were the ones that used to be in my coffee station before I redid that space I had four of them so I wanted to incorporate them in this new pantry so I can use what I had this one actually came from one of my thrift with me hauls. I got this little basket for really cheap and I thought I'd use that in this space as well. I made sure to wash all of the containers that were gonna have food directly inside of them. And this is where I got the entire family involved. <laughs> my girls loved helping me get these containers ready with a few shenanigans here and there. And for the rest of the baskets, I sprayed them down and cleaned them off with a solution of 50% rubbing alcohol and 50% water. This was the first time that I was going to be doing this and I didn't really know how many containers I needed, but I'm actually pretty fortunate that I did not really over buy. After all of the containers were thoroughly dried, we brought everything over to the new pantry area and my kids began to empty out the old pantry space. My kids actually enjoyed being involved and helping out. And frankly, it was such a huge project that it was nice to have their help. And we got rid of a lot of things that we didn't need, some expired food, we organized absolutely everything. Anything that had dust on it, we wiped down. Um, I think we did a pretty good job here together. We had a lot of fun. I 
I think the most nerve-wracking part was the part where they wanted to put the cereal in the containers. There was cereal going everywhere, but they really got a kick out of it. As you can see, this was honestly the first time I've ever used containers like this for any of my groceries. And then when I finally had everything exactly where I wanted them to go, it was time to make some labels. And for this, I used some of Cricut's white vinyl as well as some of the black vinyl. I also wanted to use some of these chalkboard tag clothespins in order to make little labels for some of my baskets. And for this, I'm going to need to use my Cricut cutter as well as scissors and my weighting tool. Now, because I had different types of containers, I wanted to create different types of labels that would work for each of them. Now, for the clear plastic containers, I wanted to create labels that matched the one that I created for my large rice container. So then I took that same image that I had previously uploaded for that design and removed the border and made it a lot smaller so that it would fit to the smaller containers. I set it to cut on my Cricut Maker. I made sure to make the right selections as far as the materials I was using. I cut the appropriate amount of vinyl and I hit go. Next, I wanted to make white letters to go on top of those black labels. So I went back in to my design space and made sure to create words that would fit within those labels because these were gonna be a little bit small. After I was done with all of the different items that I needed to label, I set it to cut as well. Then I began to cut all of the individual labels so that I can put them together and adhere them on all of my containers. With some transfer tape, I adhered the words onto each black label, and then I was able to add them onto each of the containers. And then I repeated the process for everything else. Once I was done with those types of labels, I came back and created some new decals with just the word snacks. On some of my labels, I kept them a little generic because it's not all the time that I'm gonna have the same snacks and I didn't want to have a container specifically named for a type of treat and then I would go and fill it in with something else when I decide to change my mind or change things up for a bit. And then I thought the best thing to use for my baskets were these cute little chalkboard clothespins. I thought these would be great because I could just clip them on and if I ever need to replace them with another one because I decided to change out what's inside of the basket, I can just remove it and just put a new clothespin in with a brand new label. So these are actually a lot of fun and they look really nice and I think four for a dollar was a pretty good deal. These little letters can be really tricky, but I did heat them up a little bit with my blow dryer and it seemed to work pretty well. I think these go so well on these white baskets and it definitely will help my family locate things whenever I send them over to the new pantry to get something. I 
After all the labels were done, I added a silver command hook to the wall for my aprons. And my pantry makeover was finally complete. I still have a completely empty shelf and I'm thinking about a few other things that I might store up there as well. One thing we did notice was that the inside of the pantry is nice and bright and the area in front of it is not so it looks like the Latino engineer has some lighting to add to our hallway. And if you're wondering why we didn't go with deeper cabinets, it's because of the clearance of the doors. As you can see, they butt up right to that baseboard and we even added a little bit of felt to protect the doors in case they are opened too quickly. What is a pantry without any Goya products? I'm just saying. I am so happy with how this pantry turned out. It took us a while because it was a lot of work, but it was totally worth it. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the new space. I am enjoying every bit of it. The kids love it and my husband is happy it's done. Thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. Having a fresh new space that is organized and eye-pleasing makes it so much easier now to get everything that I need to make dinner. As always, thank you guys for being here. I will see you back next week with another home decor and DIY video. Until then, adios.